الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سبيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Respected brothers, elders, sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this book فَمَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهُمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ that when some people depart from this dunya, the heavens and the earth don't cry over them. What is the reason for this? Because they have no connection with their Creator. They have no Iman. They have no good actions that the heavens cry over or the earth cries upon. On the other hand, there are many people, when they leave this dunya, the heavens and the earth cry over them. Why would the heavens cry over somebody? Why would the earth cry over somebody? Because when a person has a connection with his creator, when a person does good actions, those good actions ascend to the heavens, and the heavens accept those good actions. Why would the earth cry over somebody? The reason for this is that when a person lives on the earth, he does sujood, he does ruku, he prays, he does talawat al-Qur'an, he gives charity. The earth has pride over this person. And this is why, when a person who is pious and beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves this dunya, the heavens and the earth cry over. But very rarely do you find that the heavens and the earth cry over a person and the entirety of humanity cry over that person. And one of these very rare exceptions was Muhammad Ali. That not only the heavens and the earth, but the entirety of humanity he touched. And this is what made him unique. You know, the day that Muhammad Ali passed away was the same day that we had our Khatm al-Bukhari and the opening of our new place. And I remember I woke up, I put my phone on, and I saw that Muhammad Ali had passed away. In reality, you know, it was as though a part of us had been lost. As one brother said, it was as though a family member had passed away. For those of my generation, and those who were slightly older than me, Muhammad Ali was our icon. You grew up with Muhammad Ali. I still remember, I was still at primary school when Muhammad Ali fought George Foreman and he beat George Foreman. That entire day I was happy. I still remember when he was beaten by Leon Spinks. And then he re-beat Leon, then he beat Leon Spinks. And you know, you had this, this love for this person. And the truth is that nobody will miss Muhammad Ali in the current climate as much as the Muslims will. For he was the face of Muhammad Ali. You know, you look at this man. For three decades, he's hardly uttered a word. He's hardly said a word. But he gave the Muslims a comfort. You always knew that there was a man out there called Muhammad Ali and he was one of us. You know, as great as Mandela was. And his sacrifices were most likely more than Muhammad Ali. There was a distinct difference. Mandela wasn't a Muslim. Muhammad Ali chose to be a Muslim. You felt the akhuwa and the brotherhood with Muhammad Ali. And that was what was different about Muhammad Ali. You know, this was a man, subhanAllah, and I'm not standing here to sanitize this man. I would not say that he was a scholar or he was a sheikh or that his life was actually even flawless. Because nobody's life is flawless. But the teachings of Islam tell us two things. That remember the dead in a good manner. But more than that, and more importantly than that, Muhammad Ali, rahmatullah alayhi, was a man who had so many good actions that the little evil that he'd done was drowned by his good actions. And this is what was different about this man. That he was exceptional. His actions were unparalleled. You know, he, he made a change within society. What will you remember Muhammad Ali for? The man was good looking. He was flamboyant. He was witty. He was charismatic. He was an amazing athlete. 
He was a, the best boxer that ever lived. But that is not what you will remember Muhammad Ali only for. He transcended the sport. You had many other great boxers. You had Joe Lewis. You had Sugar Ray <laughs> Robinson. You had Joe Frazier, Ken Norton, George Foreman. You had Hitman Hearns, Sugar Ray Leonard, you had Mike Tyson, you had Mayweather. All these were world champions. But the difference with Muhammad Ali was that his championship captivated the world. He was really the champion of the world. People loved Muhammad Ali because the man was different. He transcended the support. And this is why. You know, he was a man who made people happy. Wherever Muhammad Ali went, he made people happy. You've seen all the videos. He's playing around with little children. He's helping people. He made his people, downtrodden people, the Afro-Americans feel proud of their identity. He was kind and paralleled. You know, there's so many stories about his kindness. They say that his biographers mentioned that often he would tell the media not to report all his acts of kindness. Let me mention a couple to you. There was a girl from Britain who had spina bifida. She went to America. She went to meet somebody else, but she met Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali saw this girl in a wheelchair. He took off his jewel champions of the champion ring and he gave it to her. Another occasion, he was watching the TV. And while he is watching the TV, he sees that there's a home, which, or old people's home, which they're going to shut down. So what does Muhammad Ali do? He picks up the phone and he rings. And he said, how much will it cost to keep that old people's home open? They say £100,000. He writes a check for £100,000 and he gives it. See, this was a man who made people happy. The Prophet sallallahu said that to smile is sadaqah. What about that man who made other people smile? What about that man who made other people confident? What about that man who he was an icon for people? He was a believer. He was a mu'min. But you can only do this when you are self-principled. When you have some principles in your life. When you are sure about yourself, and this was what Muhammad Ali was, he was principled, he was sure, he, he had a goal and a motivation. You know, he mentions that he came back after winning the gold medal at the Olympics, and this was a time of segregation. And he says, I went to have some dinner at a restaurant which only served the whites. He said, I went in and I sat down. And they came up to me and the waiter came up to me and he said, we don't serve niggas here. And Muhammad Ali was with him and he said, that's okay because I don't eat them either. <laughs> he said, they threw me on the street. He said, I went to the Ohio River. I took my gold medal, which I won for my country, and I threw it into the river. You know, this was amazing. Why? Because symbols mean nothing if they do not serve a greater goal. What did that gold medal for his country mean? It meant nothing for Muhammad Ali if he wasn't equal amongst the other people. It, for him, it meant nothing. And this is why the man was principled. He won the world title, beat Sonny Liston. Seven to one favorite Sonny Liston was. They gave Muhammad Ali no chance. Seven to one. He beat him and he changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. Subhanallah. Muhammad Ali passed away last week. You heard the millions of eulogies, the millions of comments and the millions of praise. But it was never like this. Go back 30, 40 years. This man, like every revolutionary before him, was de demonized. He was despised. Mandela, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Muhammad Ali, they were all despised. The New York Times when he passed away, had a full front page praising Muhammad Ali. This was the same New York Times, which when he was sentenced for five years, they gloated upon the sentence. 
When he changed his name to Muhammad Ali, the vast majority of the media outlets refused to call him Muhammad Ali. They called him Cassius Clay. Why? What was the difference? Because this man was a man who made the change who affected the general public. That's the reason. The establishment always hates people who will fight against the establishment. And if we, anything that we learn from the life of Muhammad Ali is that if you remain principled, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a day will come, Allah will honor you. The same papers, the same politicians, now because the general public are praising him, have no choice besides to praise him. And they go with the flow. But this was Muhammad Ali. This was his legacy. He made a change. Muhammad Ali was involved in the two most controversial things of his century. What was that? The Vietnam War and the Civil Rights Movement. Both of these things were the most controversial issue of his century. And he stood firm on both of them. Can you imagine? You are the world champion. You can earn millions. And then you are drafted to fight. In 1964, they signed him up. They took a test that could he join the army. He failed. In 1965, when they were thinking about invading Vietnam, they lowered the standard. So they called him up again. So Muhammad Ali was called up. He passed. And now they wanted to draft him. What did he say? This was a time, remember, this was a time... When you stood up for what you believed, not only were you demonized, not only were you imprisoned, but there was a possibility that you would be assassinated. But he stood for what he believed. What did he say? He said, the draft means that they want to send, the white people want to send a black man to fight some yellow people to support a country which was stolen from the red people. The draft means that white people want to send black people to fight yellow people to protect the country which was stolen from the red people. And then he remained firm. You've seen his videos where he said, even if you shoot me, I will remain firm. Let me tell you one of his statements when Muhammad Ali said, he said, why should I ask, why should they ask me to put on a uniform and go 10,000 miles from home? and drop bombs and bullets on brown people in Vietnam, while so-called Negro people in Louisville are treated like dogs and denied simple human rights. My conscience won't let me go shoot my brother, or some darker people, or some poor hungry people in the mud for, poor, for big powerful America. I am not, I, am, I, I, I ain't got no quarrel with the Viet Cong. They never call me nigger. They never lynched me. They didn't put the dogs on me. They didn't rob me of my nationality, rape my mother and father. Shoot them for what? How can I shoot the poor people? Just take me to jail. We know these are famous quotes of Muhammad Ali. But let me tell you another quote which isn't as famous uh, as these. Muhammad Ali said his, his conscience and his religion would not allow him to go. This is what Muhammad Ali said. He said, war is against the teachings of the Holy Quran. I am not trying to dodge the draft. We are not supposed to take part in no wars unless declared by Allah or the Messenger. We don't take part in Christian wars or wars of any unbelievers. See, this is the thing. Muhammad Ali ended up broke, stripped of his title, but he was principled. And that's what we need to learn in today's time. That we need to remain principled. Muhammad Ali just didn't fight for the black people. You, you hear about Muhammad Ali's fight for the black people because it's trendy now. But that wasn't the case. Muhammad Ali fought for even the Palestinians. You have not seen one picture of Muhammad Ali's stance regarding the Palestinians. Muhammad Ali... In 1974, walked in the Palestinian refugee camps in Lebanon. And then in an interview, Muhammad Ali said, 
He said, in my name and in the name of all the Muslims in America, we support the Palestinian struggle for their homeland and the throwing out of the Zionists. If Muhammad Ali was alive today, you know what they would have called him? They would have called him an anti-Semite. He would have, if he was a part of the Labour Party, he would have been suspended. But this is a cause that you will never hear about. Muhammad Ali, you heard, I'm sure you heard, how Muhammad Ali negotiated with the Iranians to release an American journalist, where he went to Saddam Hussein to negotiate the release of 15 Americans, where he spoke to the radicals in Pakistan who were holding Daniel Pearl. You heard this. This is in mainstream media. But one thing that you will never hear about is when Muhammad Ali called out the Israeli government. He called out the Israeli government and he said that, that free the 700 hostages that you have and the prisoners that you have in Lebanon. And this is how he defined it. He said, free my brothers. The reporters say that Israel turned down the meeting but this was a fight even the Israelis didn't want to get involved in. At the center of all this, what was it? At the center of all this was what? At the center of all this was Muhammad Ali's religion, his deen, his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was what motivated Muhammad Ali more than anything else. Muhammad Ali is a video going around where Muhammad Ali is sitting in arena. Eight minutes, the arena is full and they ask him, what are you going to do after you retire from boxing? For eight minutes, the man gives tawah. Amazing. No, entire arena of non-Muslims. And he's giving them dawah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a story. When three UK models invite Muhammad Ali to, his, to, their, flat, to their hotel room. And they call Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali goes to their room. And the, his, his manager says, until 3 o'clock in the morning, Muhammad Ali called them towards Islam. How many would turn down three British or three models per se? And he walked out of that room and he said to his manager, I fooled them, didn't I? I fooled them. They thought they were going to call me for something else. But I did something else. Muhammad Ali, this is what he did for Islam. I mean, this is what Islam did for Muhammad Ali. But what did Muhammad Ali do for Islam? The Prophet said that this deen will reach where the day and night reach. It will reach every home, the home which is made out of mud, help the homes which are made out of hair. It will reach every single home, this deen will. There will be no exaggeration to say that many homes which never heard about Islam heard it through Muhammad Ali. Many homes which never the name of Muhammad was never mentioned. It was mentioned through the barakah of Muhammad Ali. This was a man when they said that they wanted to put his name on the hall of fame. Subhanallah. You know, I was reading an interview where Muhammad Ali was asked. He was asked, who is the man that you would like to meet the most in the dunya? Muhammad Ali said that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the man. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the Sahaba, there will be people who will be my brothers. They will have never seen me. They will have never seen me. But they would give whatever they own, their wealth and their families to meet me. One of these was Muhammad Ali, rahmatullah alayhi. When they said to him that we will place your name on the hall of fame. If there was any of us, do you think we would have put any conditions down? There was a condition with Muhammad Ali. What was that condition? That condition was that he would allow them to put his name, but not on the floor. Because this was the name of his beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will have to put his name on the wall. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ He says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said, Oh Muhammad, we have raised your dhikr. Anybody who attaches there with the dhikr of the Messenger of Allah, Allah will elevate their status. 
and it's only justice where all the other stars their name is on the floor that Muhammad Ali's name is on the wall why because he shone greater than any other star he shone greater than any other star and this is why Muhammad Ali's name is on the wall but by his own admission what was the greatest what was the greatest fight of his life he had fights in the ring he had fights with the government and then his final fight with Parkinson he said this is my greatest fight in my life the message of Allah sallallahu said in an amazing narration he says Allah has appointed a certain place for a believer and sometimes he can't attain that status through his actions so what Allah does is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him a trial and a tribulation so because of that trial and tribulation he can attain that status the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if a person falls ill and he can no longer do those good actions that he used to once upon a day do Allah will still write those actions for him like he used to do them before can you imagine the status that Allah had for Muhammad Ali for 32 years Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this debilitating illness why? because Allah wanted to give him a rank Messenger of Allah said as long as a person is ill his status is elevated his rank is elevated and his sins are forgiven can you imagine having a debilitating illness for 32 years can you imagine his status so Muhammad Ali said that my greatest fight in my life is with Parkinson's but then he goes on to say amazing thing he says لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها he says Allah will not burden the soul past its ability Allah will not burden the soul past its ability and then he says maybe my Lord is testing me he wants to see if I will carry on praying Allah Akbar can you imagine 32 years your hands shake you find it difficult to do wudu for all those who say Muhammad Ali is your role model for all you hard men out there who say Muhammad Ali is your role model the man never left Islam with Parkinson in 32 years Remedic mentioned in an interview with Muhammad Ali he said I interviewed him when he had his Parkinson he said when I pray my five times Salah every day when I pray my five times Salah every day he goes I remember death I remember paradise I remember hereafter this was a man whose deed was central to him. He never went for went his salah. And this was a man which is the highest level that a believer can have. It bil qadr. Allah Akbar. That to be happy with what Allah has decreed for you. For 32 years, can you imagine what he must have dreamt about, what he could have achieved? But for 32 years he had this debilitating illness. But he was happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree for him. He said to Imam Zayd Shakir once, he said, nobody ran their mouth like I ran my mouth. And then Allah silenced me. No man ran his mouth like I ran my mouth. And then Allah silenced me. He said, but I'm fine with that. For I have done my talking. And by Allah, by Allah, if you want to see a man, you know you say this action, that a man's action, that a man's action outlives his existence. If you want to see a living example of this, it's Muhammad Ali. For 30 years he's been off the scene, but he's still the most beloved man on the face of this earth. They call him the greatest boxer, greatest sportsman of the century. I'd go further. There has never been a sportsman in the history of humanity who was as popular and influential as Muhammad Ali. And they most likely never will be. But, but everything goes. Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi But why is this man loved? Why do you and me love this man? And I say, why do we love him? I say, we love him because Allah loves him. 
That is the reason. The Messenger of Allah said, He said, when Allah loves a person, Allah says to the angels, Love this man, for I, He says to Jibra'il, Love this man, for I love this man. And then Jibra'il goes to all those in the heavens, and He says to those in the heavens, He says, Love this man, because Allah loves this man. And then Allah puts his love and acceptance in the heart of the entirety of humanity. Muhammad Ali is loved. And we love him here. Because he was loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was the face of Islam. In a time when people frown on the name of Islam. People only had good things to say about Muhammad Ali. But like everything else, inna lillahi wa inna lihi raji'un. To whom Allah we come, to Allah we return. And we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the champ Jannah al May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate his status. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he's placed in his grave, make it a rawdatun min riyad al jannah, a garden from the gardens of jannah. And for us who are left behind, let me just finish with three things. Or possibly four things. If you want to take something from Muhammad Ali's life, then these are the things. One is his bravery. That he stood for principles. Even when the entirety of humanity was against him. That he was kind, he was caring, he was affectionate. He made people feel good about themselves. Nurture this within yourself. And the third thing, that he was a true Muslim. He was a Muslim. And it was his Islam and his deen which motivated him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our deen the source of our motivation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us united in dunya. And may Allah reunite the Jannah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.